All right. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, August 3rd, 2023 meeting of the Planning Board. If we could all rise and, uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, introduction to board members. To my far left, we have Paul Amatucci. We have Don Ganarelli, Jerry Grayville, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, Les Bodwell, Rick Rains. We also have Iris Griffin, the Code Enforcement Officer, Terry Wilson, the Assistant to Planning and Code, and Hannah Bonine from SMPDC. All right, no public hearing scheduled today. I'll open up the first public comment to non-agenda items. All right, uh, no public comment. So moving to approval of minutes for July 20th, 2023. Um, I wasn't here, so I'll be abstaining from that vote. It was just in an email. Oh, I got you. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve them as amended. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right, next is Old Business Woodland Pond, request for reconsideration, final plan, major subdivision, Woodland Pond, Alley Pond, R7, Lot 2, and Johnny Lane, R8, Lot 6-6, Altus Engineering. Mr. Chair, I will recuse myself from any discussion and voting on this project okay. as I have a conflict of interest. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Um, you guys have a letter from Hannah discussing uh, the approval, the conditional approval that was given out at the last meeting. Um, so it's really in your corner as to what you want to do. Um, I did send a letter over earlier today asking that if you do decide to reopen, we'd like to reconsider the original plan versus the plan B that we sort of threw out there at the last minute as a stopgap. Um, we still have the drainage fix uh, for Karen and Rick's driveway uh, that we talked about last time. And we've also added some increased buffers um, to the plan as well. End result is 73% of the parcel would be preserved as no disturbed open space uh, or no cut restriction areas. Um, we think it's a better plan for a lot of reasons. Um, the big one, and this is exemplified by a couple of the butter letters that you guys got, it doesn't put a house in someone's backyard. Um, that would be right in here. We had the hammerhead coming off, even though it was on a plan from 2000 there'd be a house right in behind this gentleman's lot. Um, it also would be few, less road, less construction costs, less maintenance, less, less stormwater, on and on and on. Um, in our site walk with IFNW, we took away, and I think you, you were there, um, that the idea of moving or removing lots from the plan just wasn't even considered. It was just wasn't part of it. So we were shocked when we saw that. And so when we sort of really you know, hustled to you know, make something work at the end, we feel that though the original plan is we had addressed all of IFNW's concerns. Uh, all the critical habitat is preserved in open space. We amended all the crossings uh, to be turtle friendly, you know, by increasing the pipe sizes. And again, 73% of the lots in conservation. I mean, I, I think that we've gone a long way to make this plan uh, sort of balance the needs of, of conservation as well as uh, the applicant's desire to develop the land. Um, so if you do decide to open it, we would ask that we reconsider this plan. Okay. Um. I will make a motion that we reconsider um, the application, so I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. So to that statement, I was there on that site walk. I wasn't here last meeting, but I did watch it. And um, what IFNW was telling us versus what the letter said was definitely contradicting. Yeah. I walked every single step with them. and. There was a couple issues with the lot, was it lot 11 and 3 and 4, yep. which is the two the two on the bottom and then the one that has the right there, yep. 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 So what was discussed was um, moving the building footprint closer to the road and making those 3 and 4 mm -hmm. lots no cut zones yep. on the back side. Um, that's what we've got. We actually added a one, two, three, and four 
So okay. Yeah. Pasture, okay. That's an extra two acres okay. that can't be touched. And then also on lot 11, when we walked over there, basically to what we're looking at to the right, um, seemed like that was the wetter area right and everything in the center to left, the, the, the grade was at a higher grade that the water level was not even close. Yep. Um, so if the building footprint could be moved onto the higher area. I mean, if you'd like, we can put on the front of lot 11. I mean, we can't touch the wetlands. Right, oh yeah. House. We want to just cut it in half and move it. That back side, we can put a no car restriction on the whole front. You've got to pull the mic around. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we can put a cut restriction on the whole front of the project. Okay. On the whole front of that lot. Okay. Uh, that's an easy add. Um, that'll add maybe another quarter acre. Right. So. Okay. That, that's super easy. Irish? Um, Mr. Chair, I just want to say for the board, I was there as well. Um, uh, Terry and I were both there. And on my copy of the plan, when Mr. York, Derek York, was the one there with his turtle sniffing dog, um, I actually marked up my copy of the plan to reflect actually less than what they've done there and asked Derek to confirm that those were his recommendations. And he said yes. But then he said he had to send it to his boss. His boss would write the memo. And then we got the memo and all of our jaws kind of collectively hit the ground because that was a lot of things that were never discussed in on the site walk. And uh, I was, I just wanted to go on the record as saying I was very surprised and let the board know I was very surprised because what was presented in that memo from um, IFNW was not what Derek had agreed to my marked up on my own personal handwriting marked up on site for his recommendations and what they're proposing now is more extensive than what I had marked up that Derek approved. So um, just wanted to make sure the board knew that that was not like a mistake on, on Chair LaRue's part. That was literally what happened there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, my concern is we, we have a duty to maintain the public trust, and, and if we have a letter from IFNW, I, I was not at the site one, mm -hmm. but that is that is public record. Mm -hmm. Is it within the town's purview or the applicant's purview to request clarification on that letter from IFNW? Because I just I, I don't want us to get in the business of, well, the this is what hap what I interpret happened on this site walk, and then IFNW's official record, where they've gone on record and given us a letter, we're, we're kind of, if we, we, if we go back, we're kind of thumbing them in the face, and I just think that's bad for business for, for us as a town. So two things. Yeah. First, I think, yes, we can request clarification. Mm -hmm. However, the person who wrote the memo was not on site at all. Right. So I okay. think that bears knowing. Um, Second, the other thing, and I think it said it very clearly in the letter, is their recommendations, they're not requirements. They're just, they're, the IFNW's goal is to go overboard to an extent to make sure that they do every last possible thing, mm -hmm. which I feel the, the board has to kind of balance with reasonable business versus a perfect world. Nobody would touch any of that habitat. This is not a perfect world. This is somebody's property that they have the right to do things on. Um, is it, is it I don't reasonable to hold their feet to the fire and say what you guys told us on the site walk? Granted, I wasn't there, mm -hmm. but hold their feet to the fire as the, as the agency in charge of that and say, <laughs> you guys told us one thing, and then you put something completely different in writing. It, it, puts, it puts us as a board, I feel, in a very compromised position. And I, I trust your integrity. I trust you guys heard what you heard. I wasn't there. But at the end of the day, for us to say, well, they, they said one thing and they wrote another and, and go on that, I, I, I think, in, I in my opinion, it's, it, it does not reflect well on us. However, at the site walk, he did say that he did need to confer with, take his notes and confer with his boss. And then mm -hmm. I will email Mr. It. York and ask him, um, especially since you guys uh, did all vote in favor to put this up for reconsideration, I can email Mr. York and ask him. Um, to reiterate what, what he found on site and ask them um, maybe if Mr. Sari is in agreement with it, maybe I can even send them the updated plan and see yeah, if that absolutely. is something that they would be. Um, I think that's a great compromise. I, and, I just, and right now, no, you, you I know, understand. It's, it's a difficult situation. 
I understand, and it is a difficult situation. I just want the board to know that we were all kind of taken aback by that, and I was very taken aback to find uh, a memo by somebody who I've never met in person. Um, but you know, about a site who wasn't, on, site, the who wasn't on the walk. That's concerning to me uh, for multiple levels. I would never write a, a memo about a place I'd never set foot on. But that's he might have been there, and I just never saw him there. I don't not at that walk, but some other time. Um, so I'm not trying to disparage them. He could have been on this property at any point, and I wasn't there. Um, does that require a motion, or is that just an action we can take? What, as far as me emailing him? Mm -hmm. I can email anybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll email him and uh, see. The only concern I have is that they're not very timely respondents. So another thing I wanted to add is the plan B was a old previous plan from what, 2000? That was the original. This was the original subdivision plan for Alley Pond. Yeah. 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 Okay, now I can point out. In yellow is the cul-de-sac, or sorry, the hammerhead uh, at the end of Alley Pond Road. It's called out as a future right of way. And this was approved by the planning board. This is as recorded at the registry. Okay. So I saw that. So I can just recreate it. That's pretty easy. Yeah. It shows up again on another plan that is uh, when they relocated the fire pond. Originally, right. they had the fire pond out at the front of Alley Pond. This was the plan to get down to the pond in the back. So when they dug that pond out, and it shows up again. So right away, it was kind of always intended to be there. But for all the reasons I already iterated, it's not the best spot. For housing, and I, I think the plan that we already presented really sort of balances everything as well as we can with a site like this. Yeah. All right, can I? Yep. Yes. So I, I think uh, if you don't mind turning that back to the yep. the uh, original plan one, um, I was not on the site walk. Uh, I will say, um, not really in defense of the the um, turtle people, but um, you know I'm sure that they're looking at. Uh, the geological studies or the the, uh, the mapping of the site. So um, I, I, I'm with you that I think that you know we have to at least consider that because you know being out there on the site and looking at it that's great and I appreciate that. But also sitting behind a desk looking at the information, the data that you have on the site is also important as well. And I personally uh, I didn't bring this up at the last meeting because we looked at option two. I'm not. Uh, overly impressed with lot 11 there um, because it, my concern is the crossing of those wetlands and whether or not that crossing was done properly. Um, the, the crossing was not done properly in, in the first case, and that's mm -hmm. the same with the other crossing. Since and, then, and that we, was my issue with yeah, that. yeah, I, I, it's it shouldn't have been done. Um, since then, it has been fully permanent though, so that's with DEP and uh, you know, Army okay. Corps of Engineers. That's a, so it's 100% right. good now, Fair it wasn't enough. when we started. But that, so that was my issue, and that's why the doing the hammerhead and the, and the cluster development, I like that more because that left all of that habitat open. But I, I also understand the need to, um, you know, weigh the, uh, the the pros and cons of, you know, I like the fact that you have the no cut zones, uh, significant amounts of no cut zones. If that if that crossing of that wetlands is permitted now by DEP, then I. I have no objection to this plan. Okay. If I may, yep. Mr. Chair, it's you've been extremely reasonable with going back and forth between the two plans, and we appreciate that. And I and I know the abutters appreciate that. I, I think maybe as a way ahead, would would you be amenable to uh, hopefully getting a statement back from DEP to mm -hmm. clarify and, and if that statement is in alignment with what what they've heard then it would be an obvious yes for us at that point however um, if not would you so we're not putting an undue time delay on your project would you pursue consider pursuing the other one and hearing the the public comment from the abutters, and then you're doing both at the same time. That way, you you can kind of if one f falls through, then you've got Plan B and you're you're pursuing them in a you know parallel track. That's a question for her. Can we do that? Yeah, I'm can a little confused. So you're asking if so we can, can run if both we points. can if I may reword it, it's just because yep. my brain's yep. the two brain cells got a ping. Um, 
So what you're asking is if he can proceed for the, the next meeting as though he's going to have the approval from DEP for Plan A, but have us notify the abutters for the Plan B just in case. So if we don't get the D, that, not DEP, IFW approval, that they go ahead next meeting with Plan B so that we're not stopping them. Is that what you're asking? Correct. So we're not okay. prolonging his wait time and, and we're being reasonable to all parties involved. And it gives him an opportunity to review Plan B. Is that something that we can do, Hannah? I think that's kind of tough because what we're doing is saying we might have a public hearing, we might not. Right. You know, we need to have an answer from IFNW before we can say that we're having a public hearing. And because what's, what's the notice period again? I'm going to be very transparent here. We didn't know which way this was going to go, and mm -hmm. because of how long this has dragged on, we have uh, public hearing notices prepared for the next meeting that will go out in the mail tomorrow and make it if we so choose to do so. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, you can choose to hold a public hearing regardless. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I just think if you if you regardless. hold a public hearing, right, and you, and you say to the you send out the abutter notices and say this could potentially be happening. If, if it can't meet this condition for the original plan, and we're pursuing both routes at the same time, we're, we're making best use of our time and, and the developer's time, and then we, we can come to a reasonable agreement for all parties involved. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're dragging this along. And, and, and we've got and a lot it gives of the public the opportunity to, to get their voice out. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess the question I have works. would be if we send those abutters notices out mm -hmm. and uh, we hear back from IFNW that they're going to allow Plan A. Are you still going to be willing to allow the abutters to speak? That make well, then up? it's a moot point, and then we let the abutters know that it no longer affects them. But they're but they're still welcome to speak if they so choose at that but point. It, appear, for the it appears hearing. to me that IFW <laughs> isn't going to say, "Oh, we approve Plan A." They're going to say, "Do what you want," but here's our suggestion. Yeah. Uh, they're, so they're they, they're, they're not, not they're not in a situation to demand or make requirements. Yeah. And they're that's just exactly. there to say and that's the thing is in their judgment. This is right. what you'll find. They right. can make recommendations, but that's all there they won't can do. Be they any won't recommendations. Right. They won't be an approval right. per se so, from them. That's the concern. But it's still back on us. Right. Yeah. Right. There, there was a little bit of snarkiness in their tone here as well in their letter talking about the wetland impacts. They said, you know, our recommendations should be considered concessions relative to the fact that we had unpermanent wetland impacts at the time. Now, this was written after we got everything permanent. Mm -hmm. So I think they were sort of rubbed the wrong way when they found out, well, the guy filled wetlands without a permit in the first place. Um, so I think that's part of it. I doubt, you know, knowing, working with state environmental, you know, agencies, I doubt they're going to change anything. Mm -hmm. So, because they don't have an incentive to, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Well, it covers their butt more. I exactly, yeah. exactly. And I, I agree with Irish in saying that they sort of go for everything. They, they want the whole smorgasbord, the full enchilada, everything mm -hmm. in there. And so the board has to weigh all those there recommendations. There has to be a reasonable medium. Exactly. Particularly where they, what they're, you know, we asked as, as a town, as a municipality, what we asked for was their recommendations, and that's all they can do. They can't dictate mm -hmm. in a situation such as this. Um, because this doesn't fall under their purview to actually regulate, regulate, mm -hmm. um, but they can give recommendations. So I'm not sure that if I can even get a hold of them. Now, bear in mind, just to get that letter, the number of emails and phone calls I had to make over, the, what, 60 days prior mm -hmm. was obscene. Mm -hmm. It was a massive time consumption just to get somebody to please answer us to do a walkthrough to give us your recommendations. Um, and I get it, they're swamped. They are swamped and we are certainly not the only people asking them for something. I am willing to make those calls first thing in the morning and last thing at the end of the day as usual. Um, if, but if they're we're probably all in, not going to change. If we're all in violent agreement that IFNW is not going to change their tone, I, I, I'm kind of hard pressed to, I would be personally hard pressed to, to vote to go against what IFNW says. Personally, as a board member, I just think it's, I think it sets a bad precedent for future applicants and, and for us as a board to not take into account IFNW's recommendation and how it affects the wetlands, personally. And I, I don't know how other board members yeah. feel, but that's... No, I feel the same way. That's kind of where I'm no, at. I'm there. And I think that leads us to 
plan B and moving forward with, with a public hearing, but I, I don't want to speak for everyone. Yeah, I, I think I would ask the question, uh, what about um, Hannah? Is, I mean, you know, because in the past we have referred to yeah. you for guidance on issues like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would be your, you know, your official position on it, or do you need time to bring that back and digest it? And yes to that. Um, my initial reaction, I feel like it's a little bit confusing to go forward with two potential plans Understood. Um, and notice a public hearing saying we could be looking at this plan, we could be looking at this plan because then you may have a butters of plan B coming to speak uh -huh. and they not apply or the other way around. Um, I totally understand the time concern that you have about it and I also totally understand the concern for the IFNW recommendations. Um, I personally feel like the best path forward is if the board wants to hold a public hearing regardless for any plan to notice a public hearing, choose a plan, and then speak to IFNW concurrently. And then hold a public hearing on whether it's plan A or plan B, or neither, whatever the board wants to continue with, um, but only have the public hearing based on one plan. So Hannah, I, I think but I didn't really mean the direction of like how to proceed, but I meant more the opinion of IFNW mm -hmm. But she was also there at the guidance. sidewalk, yes. and she walked most of it as well. So yes. Well, so so that I'm just looking at it like you know you're saying mm -hmm. we don't want to you know snuff IFMW, and we certainly don't. But you know if 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 it's kind of a judgment call, it's an opinion is what it appears that it's boiling down to. If you know uh, as if you guys could weigh in, yeah, and give us your opinion. Uh, you were there on site. You know you know what this is this is about. If I, I would feel better with a uh, basically a third party opinion mm -hmm. on the situation and that would help sway my vote for sure yeah yeah i mean if the board wants i can prepare a written statement we can ask I can, ifmw for a written statement and go forward that way mm -hmm. um i feel like regardless of the direction it's not going to be exactly what ifmw recommended mm -hmm. um so we can we can move forward that I, way if you'd like if we go with plan b mm -hmm. that what we had talked about, and I know that uh, you know it, it raised the ire of some some abutters, which would lead to a public hearing, and, which is the process. If, if we're all in agreement that IFNW is not going to change their tone, then then Plan A is off the table. Let's let's go down the path of Plan B. Correct? Can I? I mean, can I throw I mean, in one more wrench into this yeah, works? Yeah, so yeah. if we're talking about, and this is where, and this was something. Thank you for letting me steal your copy, Eric. Um, when we're talking about having to do everything that IFNW proposed or recommended, we literally can't because they want the developer to sign all the open space over to Great Works Regional Land Trust and Great Works Regional Land Trust won't take it. So we can't actually, in fairness, try and implement or require them to implement everything here because the developer already told us at a previous meeting, I don't know if you recall, mm -hmm. that um, if I recall correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, that Great Works won't take it because the open space touches more than one lot and they wanted it to only touch one lot. Um, so we, that's where I get into a little bit of concern as if we're going to say they can't have plan A at all unless they can do everything that they want, but they literally can't do everything that they want, whether it's with plan A or plan B then where do we draw the line? Well, you just made a case for for throwing plan A to the wayside. Well, <laughs> what, it, what I'm hearing it, because if they can't meet it at all, then why is it even a discussion? Well, we no, can't they meet can't meet plan B either. either. Plan B. Oh, I got Great Works yeah, no, will not take yeah, their yeah, open either space either because either yeah. of where the previous open space was and where the current open space will be regardless of either plan. So they're asking, IFNW is asking for something that literally cannot happen because of Great Works' decision, not mm -hmm. because of anything of the developer, but because of Great Works' decision. So where do we draw the line on what we require out of here? Are we going to make them throw away an entire 11-lot subdivision because this particular condition can't be met? Obviously not. Mm -hmm. So where do we draw the line? Is, is but it's less, It's. I think the issue is the plan B is the least impactful on the wetlands. Would that be a true conclusion? Having um, not been on the site walk myself. 
I have not, we didn't walk the area for plan B, so I really could not answer that question in all honesty and be 100% accurate in my, or comfortable in my statement. Yeah, um, I've been up there. It's all uplands, mm -hmm. um, but it's not just turtles we're talking about wetlands. It's also the, the snake, the black mm -hmm. racer, which uses uplands. So either way, no matter where we put something, we've got an endangered species in one spot and another in another. Um, I, I looked at it from a standpoint of, of the abutters. Re really reading those letters, I completely feel for them and understand what, what they must have thought when they saw Plan B come around, which, mm -hmm. let me put that up. I don't know if you guys remember what it looked like, but uh, somewhere. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, you're putting lots in their backyard. It's, it's right in the backyard right here. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all upland, but again, it's, remember, it's all part of a system. It's not just the wetlands that we're looking at. It's also the uplands. If we go ahead and we fill every single wetland, sure, we left with a bunch of upland, or vice versa. We develop all the upland and you're left with wetland. You're still damaging the whole. Um, my best example in this is the Home Depot or where the Home Depot used to be in Portsmouth. There's that curvy road that goes past Motel 6. That was done to jump from island to island of upland. And as a result, you end up with a much longer road, which is greater impact. In this particular case, we're building more road, which is more impact as a whole. Plan A, the roads are already there. It's already done. The wetlands have already been filled. They've already been permitted. It's already pretty much at the finish line. We're at the 10-yard line here. So it's, it's get away those interests. I, I think that, you know, is it an ideal place to have a subdivision? Not necessarily, but it's the applicant's right to develop his land in, in accordance with the regulations, and Plan A does meet the regulations. Right. And well, and one thing I want to state is a lot of our determinations depends on what the um, comprehensive plan goes by. And that's like, just as an example with cluster subdivisions versus the regular ones. So we try and lean towards cluster subdivisions. But who are we to determine which plan you, a developer uses? Exactly. As long as the plans go by our land use ordinance, it's we have a, some weight on that, but at what point do we have full weight to say yes, no? It's usually you give us a plan, it goes through the land use ordinance, and it's that, or you know, you give us an example of another one, but usually the developer would have that choice of what they're bringing to us. Yeah. As you'll recall, when we started this many, many months ago, our, our original plan was a conventional. Mm -hmm. We had a cul-de-sac coming off of this section here and another cul-de-sac on the other side. Right. Uh, essentially, there was no open space. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, as I've said several times already, 73% of the lot. I mean, that's, you're never going to get that on another project. You just don't. Mm -hmm. Eric, can I see what the, the plan where you've cross-hatched it again for the new? I'm coming. <laughs> you chose that to get the big chair. <laughs> <laughs> Which that is the sinky chair, too. <laughs> yeah, from, from a wetland preservation perspective and just from a conservation perspective, I personally think that this plan with the no cup buffers protects more, mm -hmm. ultimately. The wetland crossing on that's 11, yep. right, is already there. Yep. The only thing that you would be doing is clearing a building envelope. Well, yes. and putting a bigger culvert in there, too. Yes, exactly. Yep. Is that, okay. Yeah, okay. but both um, of them get bigger culverts for turtles. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, if, and if that were created as a, a buffer zone, a no cut zone, mm -hmm. On lot yeah. eleven, like yeah. you have on the bottom lots there, yeah, it'd be even more. Yeah. Yeah. If I recall originally, right. when you presented the plan B at the last meeting, you had said that the plan B, since there is more roadway, also has a greater stormwater impact. Or it'll definitely have greater stormwater impact because we're adding a pervious surface. I mean, it's not a huge road, but it's more impervious, right. so it'll add up. I mean, we're not adding any new houses, uh, but I'd have to find some way to balance that that runoff. And then you have a house in somebody's backyard. Yeah. In their side yard. Yeah. And yeah. A road. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think there are positives to both plans, but I think that what you just said, Mr. Chair, also it's their project. Right. And if there's nothing explicitly that goes against the regulations. What they bring to us is what we have to act on. Yes. Yes, Irish. Can I can I ask you one thing, Eric? 
Is there any? Would it be? <laughs> would it Shall be we? a lot to maybe change this no cut buffer so it goes across the side here, and then maybe give them back a little bit of this they can have? Um, I think if if you could do that, that is the area in that letter that they are trying to protect because that is where I'll oh, get out of the way of the board. Reading that letter again, what they're trying to protect is where the turtles may come down across through here. So if they add this no cut buffer, that doesn't take the entire lot out, but the entire lot is not wetlands. It's not their natural habitat, tat, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and that protects the area that that the the that the F and I, the F and I, I the letter people want. <laughs> <laughs> I can't brain today. I have the dumb. Um, so if they added this and that, although it would still be developing these lots, which of course, I mean, in fairness, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife doesn't want anything developed, and that's their entire, um, they don't want anything where there's going to be something hurt developed, and I get that, and I agree with that, and honestly, no offense to people present, but I like snakes way more than I like turtles. I've had many for pets. So... For me, you know, this protecting the snakes is probably a little more important. But um, this is the this is the areas that they wanted. The reason they wanted these lots gone, they didn't even like act as though there was a middle ground. And I think this might potentially be a middle ground that achieves what IFNW is looking for, without making the developer throw lots into the backyards of people that are obviously very disturbed to see their backyards being built up. Um, so Irish, is there? Could you read that section? Because I, I I don't have that letter. The section oh. that you're you're citing. Oh, my teachers. They have pic There's pictures in it. I think yeah. there are pictures, but it says. Uh, so based on the uh, presence of high value habitat for both landing turtles and black racers, documented nesting observations of both species, and an objective for preserving habitat integrity and connectivity on site. That piece. We recommend that proposed lots 3, 4, and 11 be added to open space. So that was why they were doing it, is, but then they want it to hand it over to Great Works, which they won't take it, but that is for the integrity and connectivity. That's the connectivity piece. That's where Derek had said they would potentially travel. Does that make sense? Yep. Am I reading that correctly in your I'm, interpretation? I'm, I'm tracking. Yep. Okay. I think I'd, I'd also like to point out that the really high value stuff, the dynamite habitat, is 100% on the other side of the road. It's all in there, next to the fire pond, in the, inside the bog, it goes way in the back there. That's the good stuff. Um, this, he said, yeah, there may be some habitat in here, but mostly in the corridor. So if we protect that, add it to the, to the no cut. That I, was I feel that's a good compliment. That was the verbiage he used was corridor, corridor for that yeah. area. Thank you. I couldn't remember exactly what he what he said, but that's the that's basically the turtle corridor to get them from their upland areas down towards the water source. Would your would the uh, would your client be willing to add that no cut buffer there? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's not an issue at all. Or I'm asking yeah. a big no, ask. No, no. So. As long as I can fit the septic and the well. That's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it might even be bigger on lot 11 than what I'm showing. It all depends on the well radius. Mm -hmm. Now, could, would it be too much of an ask if we could get IFNW to come in and speak about it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I More. can't even hardly get a darn email from yeah. them, and I certainly can't get a call back, but I will certainly ask them. <laughs> well, if, we, if we can't get them to come in at a minimum, Propose this to them. I will we'll redraw it up. Send that to them and get their comment and and ask if that is a reasonable accommodation and compromise. Yep, uh, I have it. I already have it noted to email to see if we can get a, a little some sort of stamp of approval and or give them a deadline. Yeah, uh, what's that? <laughs> and a give deadline them a for yeah, response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I will. I'm going to mark it high priority, and then I'm going to be the bane of their existence, calling them every day again. So you think you think we could have uh, Hannah? Could you? Also review that updated plan and give us Southern Maine uh, Planning Commission's opinion on it. 
because that would that would sway me greatly i mean mm -hmm. ifmw not being responsive is not doesn't sit well with me mm -hmm. um, me neither to be honest so southern maine planning commission is responsive and you know if if they have the same interests right we all have the same interest here we you know we're not trying to inhibit anybody from you know developing property and bringing housing into this town we want to protect the turtles and you know the habitat and if if hannah could speak to that you know what what southern maine planning commission's opinion is if this you know creating these buffer zones these no cut zones achieves the the spirit of ifmw's intent i'd be happy with that even if i am i fmw didn't respond if southern maine planning commission feels that that meets the conditions you know that's, that's the spirit of yeah. it I'd, I'd be way more comfortable voting for this okay i think that's very reasonable okay. i can turn this plan around and get it to you tomorrow by lunch Okay, perfect. Okay. Don't don't add um, any upland though. Remember, they want the black racers to have some cleaning out. And I, I'm, I like I'm just going to add in these two new no cuts. Okay, all no right. Turtle, it's a, turtle food. That, it's a very that also interesting being said blend. That they did say that cutting some trees down would be good for the black racers. Well, that's yeah, what I'm. I'm that's why so I told them not to add any additional because. Like we can't right. win. Right. It's it's a very it's a very complex uh, area because you've got the turtles which you don't want to touch anything for, but then you've got the black racers that need that canopy open a little bit up here and there. And they like wood piles. And the wood piles because mm -hmm. the wood piles attract the rodents that they eat. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got two things that need pretty much the exact opposite living on one plot of land, and we're trying to <laughs> work around them both. So, back in two weeks. Yes, um, but my question is, I think I think it feels like we're still leaning towards a public hearing, but I want some weight on your determination on which plan you want to be processing forward. We want to go forward with plan A. Okay. That's, that's the applicant's okay. preference. And then should we schedule the public hearing for the next meeting? Yes. Okay, we'll send those letters tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Get okay. you all hooked up. Okay. And then we'll go from and there. Hannah, we should be able to have you guys' opinion by then. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you for hearing me out. <laughs> All right. Moving along. New business, conditional use, Beaver Dam Campground, 551 School Street, R53, Lot 13A, Walsh Engineering. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Bill Walsh. I'm with Walsh Engineering. i um, here with um, Jim Garrison, sitting right behind me. And Jim's an architect working on the project. And I also have um, Tommy Mulkey that's sitting right behind him as part of our, our team. Um, as you said, the plan that we have before you is an application for a conditional use permit for, I'm going to call it a renovation of the campground, um, the existing Beaver Dam campground. Um, into a 56 unit campground with RV park models. Um, as a team, we've been working probably over the past eight months or more, sort of developing the plan to the place where it is now and the one that you see. Um, Castle Park uh, Investments is the, is the owner, and they purchased the property back in 2021 and have operated it for two years. Um, which has given them some, you know, some real insight into the property and the, and the campground itself. And their their wish is to sort of take this um, and modernize it a bit and make it more of a, um, a green and low impact development type campground. Um, based on our review, looking at uh, aerial photos, sort of going back and looking at aerial photos, this campground's existed here since. Uh, before 1973 from what we could tell going back it actually you can actually see the roads this this um, road that shows here it actually shows up in the in the 1973 photo so um, the majority of that campground existed back then um, I think I'm gonna just let Tommy talk real quickly so you guys can just hear who they are who Castle Park is and, and just give a quick introduction on the company 
I yeah, uh, appreciate you all uh, letting us come talk to you. Um, my name is Tommy Mulkey. I am head of construction and development for Castle. Um, we're an investment group that uh, primarily focuses on campgrounds and manufactured housing parks. Uh, kind of, We're scattered kind of all over the country. Um, as Bill said, we, we, we purchased this park in 2021. Um, and you know, from I think the first time seeing it, just fell in love with the piece of property. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of property on a beautiful lake. Uh, and our, you know, our desire is to um, not only preserve but to enhance the the natural beauty of this project. I mean, we're, you know, what we're proposing to do is is reduce the number of units on the on the property in order to, you know, fill back in the landscape and, and to to. to just dress it up and make it a nicer project. We're we're proposing to uh, reuse existing structures on the, on the property, the existing kind of barn and store. We're we're looking at repurposing, not doing new construction, but fixing that up. Um, there's a there's a cool old um, uh, like incinerator on the pro property that we're looking at reusing that structure as well and incorporating that into the uh, into the design. Um, but yeah, I'll let I'll let the professionals kind of walk y'all through it. But we appreciate y'all's time. Thanks, Tommy. So this this plan in front of you here is the um, is our existing conditions plan, and I'm going to try to work my way around here so I can I can point to things. Actually, you know what? Yeah, just bring the mic with you too. Yeah. On this side. So um, this is this is the existing condition. Obviously, Beaver Dam Pond is up here. And um, School Street at Route 9 is down on the bottom. Um, it's a 26.8 acre parcel. And you, I'll say the beige that you see here is the actual impervious area. It's the, it's the campsites. All these little numbers here represent the actual numbers of the campsites that, that are there. Um, there are um, several different districts that this zoning district that this property encompasses. Um, we have the, the R3 the rural residential zone out here. This line separates that, so on this side of that is the rural residential. We have the limited residential, which is the 250, which is between the lake and, and this line. Um, we have a resource protection, which actually exists over in this area. Um, it's from this, this line to the left. And we have a stream protection district, which is runs right along the stream. As the the actual dam is right here, the Beaver Farm Dam, is right on the property. There are 78 existing campsites, uh, 48 which are water have water and electric. There are four primitive sites, and two cabins that exist here in this location. Um, there are 24 full hookup sites with sewer and water. So not everything is is um, service by sewer and water. There, as Tommy said, there's a, a there's an office um, that has a store in it, um, and they serve uh, they serve some some food out of that kitchen. There's an apartment upstairs, um, or I'm sorry, in the back of this building. There's a small apartment. There's a movie and a game room. There's an eating lounge area that's above, up above the, the barn itself. And then this part of the building here is sort of maintenance and storage. It's sort of the garage area that they keep uh, tractors and, and equipment and things in. There's a, um, a bathhouse that exists right here. There's a pool. There's mini golf. There's a little bit of everything. There's remnants of an old saw here. It's a... It's a that's what we believe it is. It's a it's a chimney, um, a brick chimney, and a brick building. Um, and there are some docks that exist out here on on the lake. For utilities, there's a drinking water well that is back here in the, in the back corner that services the 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 sites that have water and and also the the remaining part of the store and building. There's a wastewater disposal system, which is this square right here. That serves, as I said before, 24 of the sites. It doesn't serve the whole site, so it only serves a, a number of them. There's an overhead electrical system that comes in off of Route 9. It comes in and, and works its way through the site, and that's how the, how the units get, um, get electrical service. Uh, from a regulatory standpoint, 
Um, as I said, we're in we're in several districts. Um, that resource protection zone being being this one, and as you can see, there are um, there are uh, sites that go into that and roads that go into that space. Um, and the, the existing drinking water well is is over there, also. The limited residential district. This that's. Just hold the mic. Yep. When you lean over, they can't hear you. Okay. Um, the limited residential district is is this area here that's that's closer to the lake. It's that 250 foot zone, and as you can see, that's majority of the development is in that space. Obviously, closer to the closer to the lake, it includes the the gravel roads. It includes 40 campsites. Um, there's some septic tanks there, and the bathhouse. There's a playground, and the um, and the sawmill there, and the pool as well. The stream protection zone down here is mostly undeveloped. There's some of the parking and driveway and entrance way are in that stream protection zone. And there are a few campsites that, that just bump into it as well. Um, and then the R3 rural residential is this area. And as you can see, it is um, a series of campsites to the, to the left or to the south. And there's that road and the office and the building that are there. Um, the proposed plan is, I'm going to hit some stuff real quickly and then I'm going to ask Jim to speak to this a little bit, but this is the proposed plan that we have. Um, it's a reduction from 78 sites to 58 sites. We're actually reducing the number of sites that are, that are here. Um, and we've used the site to the extent that we can of, of existing pads, saving trees, making sure we don't impact sort of the vegetation in and around there, and placed our, our proposed units in there um, accordingly. We've reduced the area of the roadway, and actually the way we foresee this functioning is that it will be a, um, cars will come in to the site, um, there'll be a Within the campground proper, it's going to be um, golf carts, if you will. People will be brought in through a small path by golf cart into their units, versus um, the the cars and vehicles that go through the through the um, campground. Now, um, we're going to update the septic system, which I'll talk talk to in a little bit, and there'll be a new underground electrical system as well um, that will be that will go throughout the site. So. It really is a, a, a complete upgrade of the of the whole site. I want to let Jim talk about it. He's been key in, in developing the master plan of the, of the project, and I'd just like to have him give his thoughts on, on that. Well, thanks, Bill, but <clears throat> I don't think you left me anything to describe at this point. Uh, maybe I'll try this. So the... You know the funny thing about the funny thing about RV parks is they seem it seems as though as they as they progress through time they gather more and more gravel and asphalt and uh, that's definitely happened over here. I mean it's uh, uh, you know they're, maybe the RVs get bigger too. I'm not sure as they kind of come in and find their way, but uh, the idea is to kind of reverse that and so the pathways. You know, really, when when planning one of these things, it's the pathway that is the big, the big challenge, right? And try to get try to get the the RVs placed among the trees, so you're not taking trees down, so you're taking advantage of the views. Now, the, the you know Beaver Pond is beautiful. It's a beautiful view. I mean, it's you know it's it's been heavily used along its perimeter. So the, you know, part of the idea is to bring back a lot of you really let the the edge be come back to natural so people aren't definitely uh, really barbecuing and hanging out in lawn chairs on the edge of the water they're more doing that over in the in the center of the site right so to try to let that edge come back into its natural state the loop is uh, it's wide enough for a fire truck because we have a full we have a full 12 foot path that loops all the way through but the way we've done it is We've made nine feet of gravel, and we've put grass pavers on the edges of it. So it doesn't look, you know, we keep the permeability, keep the, gra the gl grass and so forth going. Um, the existing buildings are, uh, well, this was a lumber, this was a lumber company. And that, uh, 
That brick building was a waste wood incinerator. So it's got a firebox in the big part, and it's got a chimney. So uh, we were going to put a sauna in the uh, firebox and let people walk on the wild side, right? And, uh, and a bathhouse just up the road from it here. Um, but this is all pedestrian. This is where uh, pe people would be walking in this area. We'd renovate, as Bill said, we'd renovate all this, these existing buildings, and they're a little rough. I mean, they've, uh, their foundations are gone and so forth, so there's quite a bit of work to do there. We'd use natural wood for a lot of this, so the idea is that it blends in. Um, the, uh, we plan to put a, a, there's a house in right here at the end of the drive. It's on the high part of the you know, clearly it's where people chose to build when they first came to this place, right? But it's also too small for us to use for this purpose. It does, it's the small house, small room. So what we're thinking is of using that site and that position, which is part of the landscape and history of the place, but replacing something, replacing it with a building of almost identical size, but it's open, and it's a 50-seat restaurant. And that restaurant would be for the campers, and it'd be for the community. And... Uh, there's a, there's a plan for it to uh, do it with end grain, uh, who uh, make fantastic food. So I definitely like to stay there and eat their food. The uh, little kitchen over here, little connection, parking, right? Overflow parking can be found over here. Um, the all of the landscape that is macadam and so forth, it, you get busted up for it. It has to be. Uh, we'll plant uh, grasses and indigenous plantings. I think we we touch maybe three trees in the process of getting the road through, and we'll replace those and put some, and and also fill in where we have to. We have a, a great landscape architect uh, working with us, uh, uh, who's really on the ball. And uh, I guess that's that's kind of the description. Is yeah. Did yeah. right. I think you hit it. Just hit some of the little more in detail here for you. Um, overall, when we, as Jim said, what we have proposed here is this this pathway system, which would be a gravel pathway, and it has grass pavers on the side. So those are, um, if you're familiar with those, those are sort of a plastic ring, and if they grow grass, and and the fire trucks and emergency vehicles can get over them. So this road, the road would come in here where you see this. And it would come all the way around here to a to a T turnaround or a, a just a turnaround right there. The remaining paths in here are so this is a six foot path. This becomes a nine foot path where there is not grass pavers, and that came about um, over a discussion with the fire chief. So we went through um, this plan with him and came up with that, and he was comfortable with that nine foot wide. Um, where he didn't have grass pavers and he felt he could get um, emergency vehicles down through there. Um, so with this plan, as we've developed it, we, we actually reduce our impervious area from 33% of the site having imperviousness on it from whatever my other plan is. Um, this plan, this is actually 33% of, of the site is covered with you know pavement or, or gravel impervious area to about 19.8% impervious with this one. So, and that number, I'll, I'll try to reduce it even more, that number as impervious includes the grass pavers as considered as impervious. So it, that's a, a DEP thing, actually. DEP considers grass pavers impervious. So, but if you consider those pervious, that number goes, goes further south um, by, it goes down to about 2.5 acres of, of impervious that's left on the site. Um, the, as I said, we're gonna do a new septic system. So this is this is the location for the, for the septic field. We anticipate to, that there will be a treatment system on that septic field, meaning it's a, it's a primary treatment system that, that would be um, aerate the effluent before it's discharged into the septic field. We have to go through the DHHS for that, and that's an engineered septic system. And that would serve the entire site. We would have a, a gravity system of sewer that would probably lead down to the low point here, and it'll pump back up to that 
up to that um, treatment system and, and discharge it. We have met with DHHS and had a, a very a very good meeting with them and talked through the details of this and they were very much in favor of it. Um, the existing conditions now, as I said, there's only 24 sites that are, are sewered um, and they have a honey wagon and a, a dump station that exists out here in the, in the parking area. Um, that, that is how they're, how they're operating at this point. So it, quite honestly, it makes it a lot more sanitary with the, with the new system. Um, for zoning um, improvements, I think uh, we have done we have done several things. So we've um, the area of the of the resource protection area there. We've actually pulled back. Um, sorry, I'll and flip these. So we've actually pulled some of this this back and we've reduced the number of sites that are in the RP zone um, to the extent that we could and still sort of keep separation between between units. Um, and we've reduced the impervious area in that zone itself from 13.8 down to 7.5. So that's just in the resource protection zone itself. In the limited residential, um, this area back here, We've increased the unit setbacks from the pond, so we've we've moved units back further from the pads that um, can't see them in that plan, but you can see them here. Existing, some of these go probably within about five feet of the pond. Moving those back quite a bit, and we won't have um, we won't have gravel on these. Pretty much, you'll walk out; it'll be grass on the outside of these units. You won't have a gravel pad per se. Um, we have reduced the imperviousness on that one probably the most, 39.8 down to 21.4. In, in doing that, um, change over to more grass. Uh, in the stream protection zone over here on the right, um, we've kept the parking area kind of within the footprint of what's what's there. You this. Yeah, that's because it. That every be time great. you walk by this, you're hitting it. Sorry. And it's going <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You gotta hold the button down to, to use it. Yep. There right. we go. Perfect. Thank you. Much better. Um, so we've we've kept that um, that parking area kind of in the same footprint. We've realigned it and made it um, made it more up more to today's standard. It's kind of a just a gravel parking space area right now. Um, the rural residential area, which is this area in the back, we have um, we've have the restaurant that Jim spoke about, which is right here. That existing house is kind of right up in this space. So we've pulled that back and we've got the restaurant back behind the um, 250 foot zone. Um, we have the new septic system and we have what we're calling the courtyard park models over here, which would be um, models that are, are um, about 10 feet, spaced about 10 feet apart. And there would be deck space in, be in between those. We have these little, as I said, these little pathways that go out to the units, those would be gravel. Uh, let's see. For fire protection, as I said, we had a pretty long discussion with the fire chief and, and a meeting. We had a Zoom meeting with him. Um, not showing up on this plan, but what we will have is a um, a dry hydrant here that will go out and feed and go attach to the, to the pond or have a pipe that goes out underneath the pond. Um, he was comfortable with that, and we talked with him about the roads, as I, as I talked about earlier. We have provided, I'll try to get this wrapped up, we have provided our low impact design statements. I think you have that in your package. Um, I think this, the whole idea of this really is kind of low impact. We're sort of trying to pull all the edges in on this and uh, make it more green than it, than it is today. Um, we've given you the compliance and campground performance standard assessment and the assessment on the conditional use performance standards. We are um, looking at three waivers and I wrote these down, the numbers, but I did not. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't have the description of them. Sorry. Um, the article, well, the article eight, section eight, um, spacing between RVs. So the existing space between RVs in some places. Um, gets down to about three and a half to four feet the way it exists out there today. Um, and what we're proposing is to, um, 
is to separate these as, as much as we can. We're, we're, we're trying to juggle a couple of things. One is to keep the trees that are there and fit these units in between, keep the units kind of on existing pads as much as possible, but then space them out uh, um, as much as we can. So we have um, separation distances going to, I think, it's, I think it's about eight feet is our, is our minimum. These, as I said, these would be these would be ten feet on the on the um, courtyard park models. So I think I think we're at we're at eight feet on that. Um, article fourteen asks or um, requires five thousand square feet of land per site. We don't have that now, obviously, um, on the on the site that exists there. If you do a calculation of the site land area divided by the number of units, you could fit, I think it's 121 units on this site. So I guess it depends on how you split up that 5,000 square feet. If you look at it as a campground as a whole, we certainly exceed it significantly more than 5,000. Um, the, I'm not quite sure how that's the campground law is intended to be, um, interpreted, but I think that I, it, I'd like to say we've met it, but I think in order for us to, to feel comfortable about this, we wanted to put that forward as a waiver request for um, the 5,000 square feet per site. Um, we don't have 5,000 square feet around each unit, I guess is the best way to say that. And the last one is on minimum resources. It's uh, Article 14, Section 14, um, and it's setback distances from the resource. Um, as I said, we have increased our, we've increased all of these um, back. Some of these actually are probably about five feet back from the water right now. We've taken those back and again, sort of in the spacing of these and making these um, spread out as much as we can, um, we're, we haven't gotten them, we've, we've gotten them back some, but we, we were controlled, I guess, by those setbacks as well. Um, but we have these from about 18 feet back and then and then further is where we've where we've gotten with the with the setbacks so um i think overall i think we feel we've uh, you know enhanced the landscape by decreasing the lot the lot coverage um we've certainly just by re reducing our impervious area we're going to improve the stormwater runoff quality coming off of this site um, we have a lot more land and, and buffers and, and vegetation for which the water can stormwater can run through um, the idea of the wastewater um, system is obviously much more helpful than um, kind of what, what exists there today. And uh, we're increasing, as I said, sort of the natural landscape um, significantly across this and in, in keeping all of the trees that we can and uh, making this a, a really beautiful site. So with that, I think as a team, we're happy to, to take questions. Okay. So... Right now, as of right now, all the stuff that's on the shoreline, are those RV spots? Yes. So, okay, so you're taking the RV spots and you, then you'll be putting the, the park models there? Yes. So my biggest concern is the setback. Yep. Uh, it's supposed to be 75 feet, correct? Correct. And I understand that you've moved some. Yep. And five feet is is pretty far, but moving it ten feet, that's it's still a tall ask. Is I guess is what I I understand the idea of it, but as an RV goes there, it's a seasonal thing. It's usually like they move them uh, after the summer. Yep. So if like in the springtime, there's uh, let's call it like a hundred year flood. If there was some flooding there that nothing would really be touched there. So that's just my thought that, I mean, I can count about 10 of them that it's, they're roughly about 25 feet away from the shoreline. Right. Um, and I just, feel, me, myself, that, that feels like it's a, it's a tall ask for a setback that's supposed to be 75 feet. Other than that, everything looks, everything looks great. Um, I know you're trying to maximize what you have, and part of it is since it's old, a lot of this previous stuff has been grandfathered, but when we try to update stuff, most of the time we're trying to conform with the land use ordinance, 
So it's it's kind of like that catch twenty two thing is like if we allow something that close on this particular project, if someone comes up trying to put another campground at another lake or river, we're setting a precedent that it's okay to be within that area. And at 25 feet, that's a third of what it should be. Irish? Okay, you, you can me. Um, <laughs> I do have a question before I, before I say what you know I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. So first question that I have for you is, um, of these that are closest to the water, mm -hmm. yep. how many sites were originally there and how many did it reduce to? Do you recall? I'd have to count them, but we have reduced it. Um, if, we have reduced I, it I, significantly. Most of them are on the water where we have, in fact, reduced that, that number. So we're down 20 sites in, in total. Yeah. Over, I just didn't know how many, like, are you there. were going. Um, and do you have any park models there right now? No, we have RVs there now. Just right? regular, yeah, but not, regular, not regular park RVs. models like you're going to put. Right. In. Right. Okay, so now this is where Mike is giving me the, <laughs> okay, I made copies of this and put this on for all of you today. Um, this is something that from a code perspective, all I, I have to, um, my requirements for shoreland zoning is if something is removed, it, they have 18 months removed or damaged, destroyed, whether it be through choice or natural act. Um, they have up to 18 months to replace it in that footprint, although if it can be brought to more conforming, if it's non-conforming, we ask them to bring it as conforming as possible. And so that's my, my code thing. So Mike and I had kind of a little debate because the, the debate is whether or not my code and the ordinance are saying the same kind of thing. Right. And the, co the ordinance, as highlighted in number three, says the same thing except it does say, to the greatest practical extent as determined by the planning board. So I wanted you to all have a copy of that reconstruction or replacement. That's from the Town of Berwick's ordinance. Mm -hmm. You guys read that. Now, 99.98% of the time, opinions, as we all know, are, are lovely to hear and take into consideration, but don't really matter. This is that like 0.01% of the time where you guys' <laughs> opinions do actually matter to some extent, more than normal. I, God, that sounds so rude. I'm sorry. So but another the, thing the is there's no buildings there right now. It's RV spots. Which so is... So if there's no buildings there... But a park model is still an RV. It and okay. it still yeah. has to... They're not going to be buildings put on a, a slab. Um, foundation right. because right. they right. can't be, per our definition... Um, they They're do, movable. Yeah, right. they have yeah. to remain, everything in a campground has to remain in a recreational vehicle. And as per the definitions, um, recreation vehicle is a vehicle or vehicular attachment designed to be towed for temporary sleeping or living quarters for one or more persons, which is not a dwelling and which may include a pickup camp or travel camp or tent, tra da, 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 da. in order to be considered as a vehicle and not as a structure, unit must remain with its tires on the ground and must be roadworthy. So park models are typically left on their axles, correct? Yeah, absolutely. These so, are these are going to meet the the definition of an RV. They will be on wheels. That they will be registered. So they 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 meet the definition of a. They of will a, have a VIN number. Uh, yes. Yes. Exactly. Irish. <laughs> exactly. So, Irish, can I ask you, you? You gave us this note, and it says uh, <clears throat> reconstruction or replacement any non-conforming structure which is located less than the required setback from a water body, tributary stream, or wetland, what structure are we talking about? Well, we weren't sure where that yeah, would fall in, um, and we didn't know if that, because this is from the ordinance. So for my, for my perspective, from what I've been trained over the, over the years on uh, stormwater, from, from the code perspective, what they're doing is fantastic because they're taking what's bad and making it less bad in some in some spots a little less bad and in some spots a lot less bad um, by reducing the overall number really less bad uh, but we were looking before the meeting for something that stated you know what the planning board had to go by right. and this was the closest that we had so yeah, although they're not actual structures the pads 
could could be considered structures because they're not temporary. I'm assuming you guys going to do pads. Yeah, I mean, the, the are pad, they on pads now? They there are pads there now. So that's that right. would be the, yeah, the exactly. quote unquote that structure. If right. you, you got to speak, you got to speak it to the mic. Yeah. Just sort of the people we, that are listening. We were not TV. going to use pads because pads are impervious and they, you know, they impact the root structure of the trees around them. So we were going to use point supports to hold because we have to hold these down, mm -hmm. you know, okay. while they're sitting in the site. So at this point, what is there that would be considered the structure? Because a structure is something that is not temporary, that is on and or connected to the ground. So that would be those pads. So from my perspective, I mean, what they park on it, it's a vehicle. The, are you saying that's, currently there are concrete pads? There mm -hmm. are currently concrete pads, which define are the definition of the structure here for these. And that pad delineates where they can park. So from what they just said, what they're going to do is remove those structures of the pads and replace them with a structure of a point system that will support just the RV. The, the opinion being the 1%, um, I don't see this pertaining to this it, personally it, yeah it doesn't it doesn't it, you know we're not talking about right. structure this right. it it's seems like the spirit of this is if you had a house that was within that setback and and you get burn your house burned down you could rebuild it well by definition like what this is saying by definition a structure is anything that is on and or connected to the ground so foundations pads not just houses it can be a dock it can be anything that is on and or connected to the ground within that stormwater setback. So it does, by definition, pertain. Um, I didn't write it. Definition? I didn't write it, so I didn't. I don't know what the spirit is, but I wanted you guys to have it just because it's mm -hmm. regardless because, because, of... Because under that, under that definition, pavement would be a structure. Yeah, you know what's funny about code? Pavement doesn't come under structure. Structure is only things that are not road the, the, or the reason that I'm The reason that I'm questioning this, Irish, is that you know, we, we uh, had a conversation recently about pavement mm -hmm. being within setbacks and being within, um, you know, areas that you couldn't build a structure, but you can pave. Correct. So I, I that's why I tend to think that this isn't, the spirit of this is not to say a concrete pad is a structure. And, th and it may not be the spirit of this, but it was the closest thing in our ordinance and the only thing that seemed to pertain in regards to uh, Mike's concerns. And it does give the speak to the planning board having the approval and because it does, by definition, meet what I have to evaluate when I'm doing my stormland, um, stormland, stormwater management stuff. Um, because uh, under the code, the, and here's the difference is, you as a board, Mike is concerned about you guys as a board setting a precedence for anything that comes forward, and that is that is definitely a board thing. I'm not the board person. I'm I, the code person. So, so from I, a code perspective, I, I'm I good. May, from, if I may, I, I, yeah. and I, I hear Mr. Chair's concerns, but I, I think we're, we'd be in a very defensible position if there was another applicant that came before us because this is a pre-existing business, mm -hmm. um, and, and it has been there, and it's been there since, what, 72, 73? Um, and they are making dramatic improvements yes. and and bringing it up to modern standards. So uh, I think we would be in a very defensible position if we were to approve this project and they went ahead with their plan. If another applicant came before us and said, well, you, you allowed them to do it, it's apples to oranges. It, th this is a pre-existing um Place. No, yeah. no offense, would, no yep. offense, Mr. Chair, but I agree, yeah, I, Vice Chair. Uh, I agree. Uh, 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 but that's why I, I want you guys. I wanted, and I guess it circles back to the answer to Les. I wanted you guys to have every possible piece in front of you, with which to evaluate this to determine your duties. Because as I said, you're the board. I'm right. just the code officer. Our duties are different than code's duties in this. Right? Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I agree 100 percent with what you were just saying that you know the. The fact that this is a, a, an existing um, campground that was created prior to land use ordinance, you know, it is grandfathered on many of these issues. Whether or not it's grandfathered on these on being permanent issues. structures right. or, or semi-permanent structures being that close to the water is a separate issue, but on a lot of them, they do fall under that grandfathered prior to the Right. Uh, uh, development of the land use ordinance. For what I, it's worth. And, and, and I love the idea of, you know, you, you taking this existing campground and, 
you know, uh, increasing it and beautifying it and, you know, making it a nice, active... Uh, I think campgrounds are great for the community, and I think, yeah. you know, uh, it's, a, it's a great way to enjoy nature, and I, I really appreciate... I appreciate what you were saying about the the the, uh, the grass pavers, and I know the DEP still considers impervious surface, but you know, <laughs> I don't. That's, but that's, <laughs> a, that's a different department. I, I, uh, but uh, chair, cover your ears. But I've been in love with the improvements since the day that we first saw the presentation that they did. So um, I just. All I'm it. saying is when you update something, yeah. your grandfather goes away. So um, if you're updating yeah. anything, your grandfather has to go up to the new standards. Uh, but not I, so I want to say, I, well, right. yeah. I, appreciate, is, I yeah. appreciate this development. I love the idea of it. But I also share your concerns about setbacks from the water. I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying 100% that... Yeah, let him put them with the water. I think, I'm saying I share so those concerns. I think there's Here's a, a question as well, I if I may. Concept. I know you're trying to get a word in edgewise, and I apologize. But um, it, will there be, because I know, and I understand Mike's concerns, we're, we're big protectors of our drinking water around here, um, and all of our waters lead down to the river that our drinking water comes from. Yep. Will there be somebody here in the spring doing opening up of the campground or monitoring in the event that we do get one of these 100-year floods? Because this year we had things yeah. underwater that I've never seen underwater, not yeah, in years. And that's one of, that's yeah, they, have, the, they do have year-round employees at, at the site, so they have somebody there, a caretaker that's there year That round. can haul them out of the park models, out of well, the area if yeah. needed, out of the water, to out your, of the water range. To your point, um, it's not in a flood zone. Like that flood zone stays in the pond, believe it or not. The 100-year flood as mapped is that, and oh, okay. I, I don't. I don't disagree. Some of these have gone, have gone more, but um, yeah. I mean, I think I, I guess I have a couple of thoughts. One is, you know, I read the code, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and it was very clear to me if I was bringing a, a new campground to to your town, there's no way I could I could do right. this. Right? right. It, you're not. You can't. You can't. It, to me, it it is a grandfathered issue. Conversely, they could put RVs in on these sites that exist here now and yeah. operate mm -hmm. 78 of them. Yep. Right. Correct. So I think that's where the, I think that's where I, the decision and comes I, in. I, right? I, I get that. Yeah. My my just my big concern is, is it enough setback so that it's it's that happy medium yep. of I understand because you have to get a waiver for it for the yep. setbacks, and at seventy five feet, if you're only moving stuff ten feet, is that really saying that you're trying your hardest to get them out? I can tell you we've um if it was if they if the closest one was fifty feet, honestly, I wouldn't have a problem. Yep. Yep, understood. I, I mean it although there's twenty six acres and, and what's there, um the fifty eight fifty eight, fifty six that we're proposing, fifty eight, I don't know what the number is. Um they're they're pretty well squeezed in there, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you when you look at setbacks <laughs> between units and how much you have to put in there and take into account the trees yeah. and we have we have actually survey located all those trees that are on there so we have um i, I don't I, I manipulated is probably the best word these units into the places they are so i think based on what you said originally you don't want to take out any more trees at right. all exactly so if you took out more you could bring that setback back right to what Mike's saying, right? You're trying to ask. We don't want to do that to save the trees. Exactly. Can we? So exactly. Okay. I think that is it. It. We, we haven't done it lightly. I guess is what I'm trying to mm -hmm. trying to express here is that there has been a lot of time, effort, and energy trying to get this to to work into where it is is today. Um, you know, and and I, could could you I, reiterate? I, uh, sorry to interrupt. No, you. no. Could you reiterate what you said a few minutes ago about the uh, 100-year storm? I, I missed that. Yeah, it, the 100-year storm events, actually, the, it doesn't encroach up into the into the property. So okay. the, the flood maps don't go landward. They stay in the pond, I guess is the best way to say that. So the 100-year flood model says that, that these these uh, RVs wouldn't be affected. Would not be in it. That's correct. But That's worst, correct. absolute worst case scenario, 500 right. year flood right. hits and it starts yeah. lapping the banks. There'll be somebody there that can remove them and get them out of the water. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't have any. I, from an engineering standpoint, I don't have a lot of concern about. I understand okay. the question, but I don't have a lot of concern about that. I'm not an engineer, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, just a 
I sort of put an exclamation point on what Mr. Graybill was saying. You know, when you when you encounter a site these days, there's always some history, some development that you're working within, right? And sometimes, with in order to do what would be perfect, you do more damage by modifying the situation at hand. The roadways established in this kind of to take advantage of the water's edge because that's what everybody wanted to begin with, right? right. We move it backwards. As you were saying, that whole line of trees comes out, and the whole set of relationships now gets torn up. So it's it's a tough, you know, it's a tough balancing act always. But I think we have a good, I think we have a good handle on it. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Chair. Yeah. The only thing I noticed, you, you have a single well as your water source. Have you guys done any flow and capacity testing on that? I know you're reducing the amount of sites, but by adding a bathhouse and and a restaurant. Um, do, do you have the capacity and the flow rate to, to support that? And have you have you guys done any flow testing on the well? We we haven't tested it yet, but we have high, we have retained a hydrogeologist to go in and test that, and it will be happening probably this month. It'll okay. it'll happen. They're going to go in and test it because obviously a concern of ours too. Right. If we do have if we do have any um, capacity issues, it's likely we may need some tankage to to help overcome that. Okay. But, but you guys have already considered. We have absolutely have okay. considered it. Yep. Does, this, does this trigger that to a um, public water supply? It is. Okay. It is now. It it yeah, is okay. one now, and they do test it. Um, so it's a registered public water supply, and it would continue to be that way. Yeah. Hannah, yeah, could you possibly uh, put some weight into this? <laughs> do you have any? Comments to some of our. You want her to weigh in on the setback issue? The set, yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. This would be a lot more cut and dry if these were like cabins right. or something. Right. That were right there. You know, mm -hmm. those would definitely be structures. He could, if he wanted to, build new ones right in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. They could be two feet from the water. You can't say anything about it. The distinction between. The, I mean, the definition of a recreational vehicle is that it's not a structure. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of gray area there. Um, I would say even though the intention of these is to stay there year round, overall the use is similar to what is existing as far as people pulling their RVs in. It seemed kind of from the presentation that a lot of them do just kind of stay there. Yep. Um, so I think overall the intensity of use is comparable. Um, the decision to define the concrete pad as a structure or not, I'll admit I don't know. Um, either it's a way. Cool thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in that case, if you did define the concrete pad as a structure, they are removing the structures um, out of that setback and putting in a non-structure, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a non-structure. Non yeah. <laughs> so, so in that case, it is increasing the conformity in a sense because you'd be removing the concrete, removing that impervious surface there. Um, I guess the, the determination of greatest practical extent is also kind of just whatever you want it to be. Since it's the greatest practical extent, it's not the greatest extent. Um, so, I mean, they could remove or remove most of those park models, most of the RV sites, and move back. Can you even get completely out of the setback? Oh, I can't read the line. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to back, come. Right? You'd have to come back. You'd have to move pretty far back to yeah. get yeah. completely yeah. Yeah. to that right. 75 feet, um, and that's not really practical. It's not the best use of the site. It's not currently what the use of the site is. Um, so I don't think the practical extent really is to move it to that 75 foot setback. Um, so I think the improvements here are great and great as far as a lot and great as far as good. Um, and I think that the greatest practical extent really is, is what they're presenting here. And, and I would be of the opinion, if you are taking old campsites where you have people parking old campers <laughs> that are prone to having old camper issues yep. on a waterfront <laughs> and you're putting park models in and you're increasing the integrity of the infrastructure, yep. uh, we're, we're coming out ahead. Yeah. And, yeah. and I don't yeah, think yeah. we're setting a new precedent necessarily, uh, but that, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I would As you said, you wouldn't be able to just come in with a new campground and do this. No. Correct. So I don't think that Correct. allowing... No 
them to be 20, 10, however many feet from the water as the proposal is, is setting a precedent for anybody yeah. who would want to come in and propose. I, I would agree. I, I don't see the, the setback as being an issue, particularly in view of the uh, mega improvements yeah. for the entire facility that are going on with, uh, with a lot of thought to uh, environmental issues uh, in general. So uh, I, I really don't have a problem uh, with this. And, you know, it is actually better than it was when, when it's done. So uh, that works for me. Great. And I think going back to what I said and what has been said, I think what they've done has made it better without destroying the natural lay of the land that's there they've moved back to the extent i think you can yep. without cutting down more trees and still giving room for the fire department and everybody to get through and the utilities and all of that yes yes that's what i'm hearing you say hey, yeah. you're reducing land disturbance is by absolutely not taking uh, yeah, out yeah, trees and stuff area. yeah you, yeah you know if you do a site walk you're going to see what's what's out there and it's a lot i, I have one other concern I'll totally separate from setbacks um Everything looks great. You're going to ask. I have to know. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, we consulted with them, by the way. No, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, all right, I'll mention the vernal pool. Yep. Uh, you have a potential vernal pool. That will be um, investigated more thoroughly. We're, we're actually outside of the 250 on that. Okay. So we're, gonna, we're just going to stay away from it. Perfect. Yeah. Um, pickleball courts. <laughs> oh, God. Right? I mean, I'll say it, right? <laughs> You have a Butters nearby, yeah. and has the sound of the uh, newest fad been taken into consideration with the locals? We have we have talked about it as a team. We, um, we will. If you guys speak, you guys speak tonight. Sorry, we, just for the we, people that will watch him. Certify, however, is necessary that we will use the the low decibel ball and paddle, which I understand is the only way to control the sound of those things. Um, so that's that's the only thing that will be available there, and uh, it seems like that's been pretty well received. Yeah. We do have a sound ordinance, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and it's from the hours of 7 and 10, mm -hmm. except excluding uh, Fourth of July week and Christmas, um, to well, be a nuisance. Well, to be a nuisance, <laughs> yeah. it has to be com it has to be a full 15 minutes at a time. So if Someone would have to be hitting the ball consecutively <laughs> for it to be a real issue because it's just like a dog barking. If a dog barks and then stops and then barks again, you have to keep resetting your timer for that. So it's right. This is just one of those things I feel like environmentally you're doing great things. Here's an instance where you might be making one environmental impact a little worse. <laughs> so I just wanted to put it on record that it's out there. Yep. And um, tennis is a great game with less sound. <laughs> um, so we, like I said, we, we have a number of campgrounds, and uh, pickleball is huge, and everybody wants it there, but this has always been a concern. Sure. The, the new, so, so we, like I said, we have pickleball at a lot of our campgrounds already. The new, the low noise paddles and balls really make a difference. Okay. Um, and if we needed to do some sound screening, I think there's going to be. Uh, I think any of that's you know, up in here. As long as you're amenable so, to that, then yeah. Well, and the closest residence is probably a hundred over two hundred feet away. I don't think they'll be able to hear. Yeah. What we're doing. And it's got screening. You got screening right around that, anyways. One thing to think about is that if the pickleball disturbs the residents around it, it's going to disturb the guests more. Right. Mm. Mm. So. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, be ready for that talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Because whether it meets the noise ordinance or not, I'll be getting the calls. Yeah. So. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> you have anything else, Hannah? So, process wise, tonight we are looking for, I believe, um, a vote on completeness for the application, and with that would be the approval of the waivers, mm -hmm. um, and then setting a public hearing, question mark? 
Yeah, at least a uh, sight walk. Yes. Uh, can we do completeness with no. the condition of the floor test for the well to ensure that the well can support what we're trying to do? Because that is pretty. That's a good piece. question, Hannah. Can we condition the completeness completeness based on hearing back from the water supply, or yes. is okay? Condition it that they have the flow rate to support what they they are proposing. Yeah, because yeah, okay. they've demonstrated intent to do so. Yep. Okay. Well, then I, I will make a motion to find the application complete with the condition that uh, we, we get feedback on the performance of the well and that it can support what, what you guys are proposing. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next is the waivers. Yes. I'm just trying to get my paperwork here. Space between RVs. Is that the first waiver? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. The first one is yeah. Yeah. Six, article. Oh dear, what are Roman numerals? Eight. eight. <laughs> article eight. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Section eight. Eight point one point B point one point A. a. Right. And that's the distance between. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, it's 25 feet between RVs, and they're asking for a waiver of that based on the grandfathered, essentially status that they're currently. Right. I would make the motion that whatever that number was, <laughs> uh, that the space uh, be grandfathered and acceptable to the board. I will second. Go ahead. Go ahead. I will you second. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder, okay. brother. Okay. Uh, further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next is Article is that 14, 14. <laughs> Section 14.15.G.2, and that's the density, the square foot around each model. Um, G.1 is the 5,000 feet, 5,000 okay. square right. feet per Sorry. Side. All right, so it's Article 14, Section 14. Point fifteen point G point one. Yes. And that is the square footage around the yes. footprints. Can I yes. ask something about that? Yep. That doesn't strike me that that means you have to have five thousand square feet, like like a around each lot. unit. Yeah. It means you have to have five thousand square feet per of land. campsite of mm -hmm. land in general. So that's how I perceive that as well. You have ten yeah. campsites and you have fifty thousand square feet of land. You you meet that requirement, it doesn't necessarily have to be around that campsite. And they have identified that based on the calculation. Yeah, you have plenty well of yeah. Land we're area. well over that. So if, uh, if that's yeah. how you'd like to interpret that, then they don't need a waiver for that. I, I agree with that interpretation. You go to any campground now, you're not 5,000. No. Okay. Because I think if, if the yep. intent was 5,000 square feet, like a house lot, it mm -hmm. would also have dimensional requirements for right. that. Right. For, the, for, for each the little lot. lot. For, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Break so we can moment. just strike that right out? Yep. Okay. As long as we're all in agreement to that. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you want to, do we need to make a motion to say that they don't need it? or just I'll make that motion that Might we as well. um, <laughs> aren't considering that as a uh, requested waiver. I'll oh, second it. <laughs> 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 all right, wait. Who are we giving credit in a minute? We'll, Rick? we'll give Rick um, yeah, yeah, yeah. further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. Kids, we gotta we gotta be able to make notes here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, Article Fourteen, Section Fourteen Point Fifteen Point G Point Two, and that is the setback. Okay. I I think we've already discussed that, and you know what they are doing is a drastic improvement over what's there. Um, you're not having a, you know, twenty year old camper leaking raw sewage on a waterfront. <laughs> Um, I, I would make a motion that, that we accept that waiver or grant that waiver. I'll second that motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All against? Okay. And then scheduling the site walk. Oh. No, we need to vote on the completeness. Did we, we did that. Okay. Did that. Okay. Did that. Pending, okay. okay. So yeah. Yes. Then it the was the well. The Condition well that the well flow well. testing yes. is appropriate to support the infrastructure proposed. Okay. Yeah. So it would be for the site walk and public hearing.
So, so we're looking September at the first 7th. meeting at September? Yes, okay. September 7th. The day that shall live it in for me. <laughs> and does 5 o'clock work? Five, five, sure. Five, yeah, five, 5 is still, yeah, it's still light up. Yeah. still light enough. Okay. And my usual question, um, is there anything you would prefer that they mark out, delineate, that you want to see in particular? I think... Uh, if I may make a suggestion, Mr. Chair, yep. um, probably if you guys have an opportunity to mark out where some of those uh, that are closest to the water, those 10 in particular, yep. um, where they'll be versus, so that we can see where they'll be versus where they are now to, to, so Mr. Chair can see what the distance, what the sure. distance is yeah, actually going to look like versus yeah. the, the contours of the land as yep. we discussed earlier. Okay. And, and also location of new buildings and yeah. uh, facilities, okay. restaurant, that sort of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever you guys think might be pertinent as well, but I definitely think that. Yeah, and that's yeah. September 7th. September 7th. It's at 5 o'clock. And location of the pickleball courts. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, and a demonstration of these low volume, uh, low sound pickleballs. <laughs> Look, nobody said I was going to have to play pickleball as part of this show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to play pickleball. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Thank you, John. Thanks. All right. Moving forward in new business, conditional use, Brian's Trailer Repair, R57, Lot 46. Thank you, Chair. Name. My name is Brian Gary, and I would like to thank the Chair and the Vice Chair for us being here tonight. And this is a good friend of mine. He's my mentor, knowledge, and stuff I don't have. I mean, the Cherico. Cherico. Um, I am looking to, um, for conditional use, to hire an employee where um, I've ex just gotten so busy I cannot do it by myself. Just for a little bit of further explanation, this has been, they've been operating as a home occupation uh, for many years, and now in order to hire an employee, it's no longer considered a home occupation, so now they're coming to you as a conditional use. Right. And then they needed to lease 32,000 square feet of additional land to be able to do this mixed use? Yes, yeah, there is a portion in the ordinance right now that if there's a mixed use between uh, residential and commercial, you need to have uh, half, a mixed use half shall again. meet the minimum lot size for a residential use plus half the minimum lot size for each additional commercial or industrial use. Um, so they entered into a lease agreement with Great Works Regional Land Trust to get that additional land area in order to satisfy that. Yep. Um, that's also something that we're in the process of I was changing. Gonna say that. Right, I was <laughs> also going to say that so, with the town vote, this, yeah. this is hopefully that will go away. <laughs> so um, come November, when we vote, it's the land use ordinance has the possibility to change to not need it. So the lot size doesn't change. So you're not going to have to have that extra half. So but keep the lease short. Right. Yeah, what the, what the chair is, it what might the chair possibly. is saying is as you may be able to cancel your contract. Right. You may be able to cancel no, your contract. Right. It's, it can be canceled at any time. I'll keep oh, it touch that's their discretion oh, that, at that point. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I made sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, other than that, like like you just said, you're only add it, doing this to add an employee. You're not adding anything to your buildings. Nope. You're no. not. It, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing that was missing, it looked like for review, was the statement from Water and or Sewer District or Utility as to the availability of public water and sewer. Is that correct, Hannah? It's city water and sewer. Okay. okay. Water. Yeah. I, I'm just reading. I'm just yeah, reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, were you able? To, were you able to reach out to them? It's kind of an, an odd it's situation. They're already serving, so as long right. as yeah, right. not changing anything, one I think they're okay. One person isn't going to change that much yeah. of the usage. Yeah, yeah. it's technically missing, but I don't necessarily think it's necessary at this point. Okay. Unless they're changing any use, which I don't think they're. Right. For for what it's worth, um, and why it didn't, and I apologize, I didn't think of that 
portion at all. Um, although we're used to dealing with, you know, septic that is either HAT 200s or major impact, um, especially in pertaining to the water. Jay from Jay Wheeler from the water district counts based on kitchens, which they're not adding a kitchen. They're just adding an employee right. who's not going to be living on the premises. So it never occurred to me. Okay. My apologies to the board. Hey, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're looking for completeness or approval? Yep. 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 Completeness. I will make a motion that we find the application complete. I will second that motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next is do we want to do a site walk? Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Not done yet. So, um, so the question at hand is, do we want to do a site walk? I mean, I don't. I don't think, I don't think we need one. I don't, no, I drive I don't by see the need. I drive by times yeah. a day. And that also everybody in goes town knows where you are. <laughs> and then at that point, do we need to schedule a public hearing? Because this is optional at this point. The abutters list went out, and nobody replied. Is that a correct? I see the abutters list, and then it said that the letters went out. So, well, letters haven't gone out for a public hearing. Oh, they have hearing. not. Yeah. No, okay. Not for a okay. Hearing. No. no. Okay. The only way they would is if we want the public I see. hearing. Yes. Um, but right. as it's just adding one employee, I, I don't. I also don't no. feel. Yeah, it's a waste of administrative effort. Right. I don't think we need yeah. to. So you're not changing the function. No. They're literally the only. At the only this yeah. point, if no, we're not going to schedule a site walk or a public hearing, could we find this application to? Could we approve this application tonight? Yes. Okay. Well, I will make a motion to approve the application. I'll okay. second that. Okay. For the discussion. <laughs> all in favor? Okay. Thank you. Now you're all set. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brian, you can leave and you can get your employee. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're doing what you're doing, Brian. Yeah. You're Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you're doing you. great things, Brian. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. That's an easy one. That was, that was pretty straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank Thanks you. for presenting. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. Next is sketch plan. David Springer, Major Subdivision, off Diamond Hill Road, R29, Lot 16, R40, Lots 10A. Is he here to speak on this? Either David or They're not. Nobody. That's okay. speak. No. Question on this. This isn't the Diamond Hill Walter Felke was project that. that's being proposed in conjunction with North Berwick. We've got multiple on mm. Diamond Hill. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. So if they're not here, which we're not which? supposed to discuss well, I'm it. But I'm, I went I'm, to that meeting as well. Just, think, just for I clarification. Think, think okay, that's I what I thought. Yeah. But yeah. this is just pertaining to those right. lots in Berwick. Right. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. There's also some other I don't think there were, yeah, um, that's right, there were about five lots they, in Berwick. Yeah. This is a... Uh, if you're thinking it's the project that was going to be a joint project with North Berwick, it is now two separate projects. North mm -hmm. Berwick has some ordinance changes that need to be done. So Thanks. this is going to be its own project here, but I don't see David, nor do I see Walter here. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, moving forward, we're going to go into new business, sketch plan, major subdivision, Goodrich Farm, R40, Lot 4, Durant, and Diamond Hill Road, Altus Engineering. I love it when people cancel. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, for the record, once again, Eric Sowery from Alts Engineering here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we are at the corner of Durant and Diamond Hill Road. Diamond Hill Road seems to be very popular these days. Um, the parcel is 22 and a half acres, uh, the area in green there. Um, and we're doing, obviously, a major subdivision. Uh, we've got uh, two frontage lots uh, down here. As you can see, this is a frontage lot as well, and then two private right-of-ways extending into the back. Uh, the yield came out to be 10 units. We could get... <laughs> I brought my own. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. There we go. Modern technology. Uh, two private right-of-ways here. Yield calculation shows we can have 10 units. We're only proposing seven. Um, we felt that uh, building a road here just doesn't fit with the area, uh, so we've got bigger lots. Uh, this is mostly pasture, so you're going to have a lot of that stay here, uh, which is good. It's kind of like that other one we did on Wentworth, where we had the bigger lots that kind of fit with the community. Um, 
that's it in a nutshell. It's very straightforward. So we just like to get you guys comments. We want to schedule a site walk. We're in the wet lake. Got a little tiny bit down here and a little bit over here, and that's it. And no turtles. I got no hits on anything. <laughs> um, I noticed on here there was a letter stating that they wanted a dry hydrant put in for the because of the firefighting to to benefit. Uh, yeah, that that, uh, that was a was that this one? I don't think that's, that's, that's a different. That's a different. Do you know that? Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Maybe he's right. No, it's uh, I read that today. It's the this is a Goodrich Farm. So th th this is, and I, I okay. think this is a comment from the fire chief in conjunction yes. with the other one. Yes. So we need to meet with the fire chief to discuss what okay. he wants, where. Okay. Essentially, so that's a, that's up in the air. Okay. Right. Okay. Here we are. Okay. Letters in the back. Nice catch. <laughs> Sometimes I'm with it. It's my anniversary. I'm with it. Hey, all right. You yeah. actually know the anniversary. This is good. Yeah. You're ahead of the game. Okay. So, uh, the right of ways is uh, the right of way or multiples yeah, are to get to. Two lots each. In the back. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's so essentially a common drive. Common drive. Yeah, so we okay. wouldn't be building a road or anything like that. Yes. So no need for a call sack, no town maintenance involved. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. Got awesome. It. Yeah, there's a bunch of them up and down Durant Road. Yeah. yeah. So, that, and this may have just been the question you just asked. Um, lot three, will that be accessed from Durant or off of one of the rights of way? Uh, it can go either way. I figured that would come off of, of off of the frontage, okay. off of Durant Road, because that's where the way would be facing. Right. You know, it would be kind of weird to have the side of your house facing the main road. But, again, that's the builder's preference and the lot of his preference. So um, isn't it considered a road if it's three? Yeah, I think it, it, if, okay. it is, if it is three, then they have to come off Durant. So that, that's easy, and that's if that's a note on the plan. I think it's three would make would, would it trigger a road okay. well, rather can, than a driveway. We can yes, that. yes, and um, I think three makes it a town road. I think you can have you can have a private no, road. No, private road. Have a driveway that serves three. Right. A driveway can serve two. Yes. Okay. Driveway can yeah, serve two. Private, private road. road. Once you hit three, it becomes private oh, road. It has to be built to town standards. Once it hits three, right? But yeah, okay. but we don't adopt the road. It just has to be built to town standards right. once you hit right. the so third. So that's house. what was confusing about yes. what you said. Yeah, there's town three standards houses, for a private road. Though. Three houses creates the necessity of a town standard road. Yes. yes. Correct. Two so houses can be on a 15 foot wide gravel road. road. Correct. Like yes. But it remains a private road unless it is connected to another, unless and until it is connected to another road and the town votes. Right, but I think it. the question was that the house. So it has to be two there. Yeah. Whether unless, or not the third house was off the right of way. Yes, yeah, we'll, unless we'll, they want to build it to town to standards. We'll put a note right here that says that's where you access. That, that, that's simple and restricted from those rights of way. Okay. Piece okay. Of yes. Yeah. Two dwelling units, 15 feet wide, 15 inch deep gravel. Three or more dwelling units, Town of Barrick Road Construction Standards. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I mean, it's just a sketch plan. Just a sketch plan. No, I mean, if you want to do a, do you want to do a walk? Um, don't want to do a walk? Well, no. I think. Well, we can do a walk after. Yeah, we can do a walk after. Right. Yeah. Oh, so you don't want to do it? Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just in our, just how we do it. Yep. It's once it comes to. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're thinking, yeah, yeah. let's see what the, what the rules say. It's too late in the day. We don't have <laughs> I know. IQ I have points to share. So usually we find it complete and then we do the site walk. How did we do that on Wentworth? Did we do this? I thought we did sketch plan. We had one. I mean, it, it's possible. I mean, we, we, we. I don't think I don't think oh, it's again. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Reapplication meeting, sketch plan, and on-site inspection. Article five. First, the applicant shall present their pre-application sketch plan and make a verbal presentation. Following the applicant's presentation, the board asks questions and makes suggestions. Then the date of the on-site inspection is selected. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, All right. what what I have from SMPDC is a little different. Oops. 
Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> I'm just following what I have written, so... Yeah. That was me. <laughs> well, I don't know. It, it, this might have come no, from... No, that was me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. You remember. <laughs> okay. So, so um, we have September 7th. Is someone's already doing oh, it. Sorry. But... That's not that far. Diamond Hill Road is only like a 10 minute drive, if that, from where the. Wait, where are we going? Campground. <laughs> campground. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, right. It's going to be a long yeah. time. Yeah. I don't know geographically where anything else is, but we have other site walks scheduled the rest huh. of this month or any yes. of those anywhere near this. Uh, what do we get scheduled? Well, they're all in Berwick. JoJo's. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Uh, yeah, JoJo's tri the, it's Tri-Can. I mean, the Tri-Can's not That'll that. That'll take 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and that, we could probably do it so, after I that. I mean, you could easily do two site walks in okay. one. We have a site walk next week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But don't we have to isn't, notice isn't, that? Isn't JoJo's next week? Yeah. JoJo's, JoJo's Cafe. The 17th. There's not enough time to notice. Oh. The well, for a site walk, oh, we can yes. do it, but for a public but hearing, you're right. JoJo's is the 17th. And right, so we're not going to do that. Malloy, no, Norman Court is the tenth. Okay. Okay. So you could do it on the same day as JoJo's, probably. Okay. It's so on the seventeenth. Yes, on the seventeenth. So on the seventeenth, does that work for? Oh. I'm not as, well, there's I'm not no meeting on, okay. on the so on the on the tenth. On the tenth, you could make no. it. You could do it on the tenth because. We, we, you'll see Norman Court, and then there, there's no meeting on the town. That's true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. The, if the 17th, tent works. we have the meeting afterwards. Or, <laughs> since, for his sake, mm -hmm. since the intention is hopefully for his come, other project to come one. back on the 17th. We can make roll it easier for him and just do it all for. on the 17th. Well, whatever yeah. easier okay. for you guys. As long as we can have a quorum for the 17th, if two people aren't going to be here, we need to have at least four people show up. So if, if you guys can, I'll, I'll be here. You'll I'll be, be here. here. I'll be there. Yep. Um, so it's Jerry's, uh, maybe, and then yeah. Rick for the seventeenth. For this, I will be here. Okay. So we're gonna stick to the seventeenth. Yep. Um, um, so time. Well, if JoJo's is what at five, which will take about. Five, five minutes. minutes. Well, hopefully. <laughs> so we'll say 5.30, if that one's at 5, 5.30, 5.40. Because, yeah. I mean, then we have the meeting at 6.30. So if I we mean, say 5.40 we're a little quick late, too. I mean, as long as we have the quorum come in at, yep. you know, it's... 5.30 is fine. 5.30, okay. 5.45. Yeah, five. Okay. let's call it 5.30 and people right. will strike one. Yeah. Okay. And we'll just try our hardest to get there on, yeah. on a time. Yeah, if you guys are late, no worries. We'll wait. Okay. We'll be too busy eating breakfast pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> <When am I? laughs> we, we can't have breakfast pizzas <laughs> on the site walk. It's conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we tried that. I'm like, you are just killing all my I know. Food. Hey, I'm just trying to go by what we're supposed to go by. Actually, we if... can't be taking bribes. Said, <laughs> if the pizza hits the floor, though, uh, you know... Five-second rule. Second rule. Yeah. Right. Well, well, everybody in there agree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. It's five-second rule. All right. Thank 540, you. 17. Thanks, guys. All right. So next, I'll open up the second public comment. You guys have anything to say? <laughs> You're just hanging out. Okay. All right. All right. I, I wanted to add the public comment. I, I wanted to thank both the planning board and the select board for their uh, efforts in, in getting uh, a, a better quality document ready in, in hopes that we can meet the timeline for the votes. And I, I apologize that I was not available. I uh, had no connectivity. And I know that my uh, recommendation that probably created a little undue stress for you, so thanks for carrying the load. But uh, we we got to do quality staff work, and I'm and I'm glad that we were able to get all of those issues that the townspeople brought before us out in the open, addressed, and and at least out there for consideration. So thank you, gentlemen, for for your efforts in that. It was a productive meeting. It was mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Even without yeah. you, <laughs> probably more so. <laughs> All right, anyone else for public comment? I have a I have a question. Can we get you guys the Springer packets back so we don't have to get more? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Which one? The, the Springer. The one that we weren't able to hear. Springer. Yeah. Uh, oh, which one was that? BH two M. I labeled yes. it. It has green. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has if you guys could just it. leave those on the table <laughs> yeah, for us, we'll we'll pick them up on on our way out. Yep. 
Yep. That sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Yes, so only. Thanks, Don. <laughs> I'll close that second public comment and informational items. So just a reminder that there is a site walk next week, even though there isn't a meeting. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Terry right. could send us an email, email the day before, if possible. Just to remind us. What? I will not be on that tight walk. You're I will be in Disney. Disney. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. information is that Rick has Mickey Mouse with a dyed red tongue on the side of his head <laughs> for any of our visually impaired viewers. I thought that was cool. It is cool. Yep. Thanks for that. Yeah. It is very cool. Have fun at Disney, my friend. Yep. All right. Great. Um, no more informational items? I don't think so. Move to adjournment. There's no uh, additional items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. I second it. All right. Uh, <laughs> Wait, who are we giving credit to seconding? I'll say less. Less. Okay. All right. We got to let Les get more. in on it. Less is more. <laughs> Less's was more. Less's voice was more. All in favor. All in favor. <laughs> you guys all better right. be. Right. Good night. Good Thank night. you all.